getting all sorts of dodgy readings here. Oh look, that's been completely chewed. And that's probably where it's tracking across. Nibble, nibble. That's bad. Can people really tell the rodent by the bite? I want to try and make electricians great again. Hi, welcome back to Artisan Electrics. Today we're back at a job that Jordan done two years ago. So he had some fault finds to do and the fault seems to have reoccurred. So we're gonna have a look to see if the squirrels have been back. So yeah, you may recognize this room. We will leave a link in the description to the two other videos. Jordan was called here for an RCD fault. This RCD wouldn't hold. Carried out a few checks and narrowed it down to the upstairs lighting circuit and then narrowed it down to a particular light. And then when he replaced the bit of cable that was down, neutral to earth, he found it was completely chewed by squirrels. So I'm gonna try and narrow it down to a certain leg of the lights, try and replace that bit of cable and see if it's been damaged. These are the circuits that are been left off by the customer. When these are turned on, it takes out the RCD and has taken out the RCD that feeds here. So I'm just gonna get my tester out and carry out an insulation resistance on these two circuits to find out what's going on. Yeah, this is the first real day of winter, isn't it? It just feels proper chilly. Take this. You're just wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> You'll have to bless the mess. I've not managed to get to the uh, wholesalers to get rid of rubbish. You can tell how old it is. It's like I faded the strappage. You can't even see Unilight on it anymore, can you? <laughs> right, let's assume these are in order. I'm just gonna turn this off while I work inside it. And customers said that the downstairs light started tripping as well, which, or one of the switches, but I believe it was a two-way with upstairs. So I'm just on insulation resistance. I'm gonna test from live to earth, CPC. So we've got a dead short, neutral earth, dead short. In fact, it's so much of a dead short. I'm just gonna turn this to low ohm to see if we have continuity on low ohm. So yeah, so they are just literally touching because it's such a low reading. So if you imagine this is the cable of your live CPC and neutral in it, it's being stripped completely bare. Now, if it's just sitting still, they're gonna be close to each other, but won't fail. But it only would have took him a, a rodent to touch it. And two of the cores, it could have even been twisted. So all three are down at the moment. So I'm gonna have to go inside the property and try and isolate the legs going up to the lights and to see whereabouts the short is. see there's no loft space really they've just built that up on the frame it was in here if I show you between these two lights the leg was completely damaged and it was eaten at this point here on the flat I think it was goes there like that and the S so that's where it's down so I'm going to take that switch off it feeds the switches and then see if we can remove the fault we didn't use the ropey connector block I think the customer has actually removed that himself. <laughs> They're not that hard up. So if you are taking off a, a switch, if you pop them in like that, then you can't really lose them. The amount of times I've lost screws is unreal. And if it's hanging down, gravity will keep them there. This is the outgoing leg up to those lights. You can see we've still got a dead short. This is on a uh, low ohm. But if I put that on insulation resistance now, let's put a crop clip on it just to show you. It's fluctuating around, but that is a, it's a low reading, but remember this is mega ohms. So that's 8,000 ohms. That, that's the reading it's getting there. It won't show up on low ohm, but it doesn't mean that there's not enough of the, so nothing there. It's just to show you the difference between the two tests. So we're getting, it's fluctuating. So that's, that would be 4,000 ohms. So the lives are touching like you'd put a link in it. The other ones are very close together. Or well, there's a break in the insulation, so just about touching. So when we put a, it's essentially a pressure test what we're doing with the insulation resistance. We're putting a voltage down it and testing the insulation. Imagine it like a pipe. So you put in a pressure test on a pipe. If there's any holes in the pipe, it's gonna leak water and it's exactly the same thing. So the conductors side by side are getting the current pass, uh, voltage pass down them and it will detect whether there's a, anything leaking between them. So it's before here, this is the incoming cable. So it comes into here, then goes away up to these lights. But this is showing that it's down. 
as well. So we have to go before this. I believe it goes to this switch next. One of these is the live in. One of these is the live going to the light next door. And then this is your three core for the two ways. One downside to Mega's other um, testers, when you pull off this crocodile clip, you'll have the probe underneath it. So it's quite quick to change over. It's only downside to Mega. So this is the feed going up to these lights in here. And that one has a dead short on it. I think this is the cable going to next door. So that should be clear. Put that on insulation now. Clear, so that bit of cable going through the wall hasn't been chewed by squirrels. Now the feed coming in, which is this one here, is clear to neutral, clear. So if we try to imagine it, we've got a cable coming from the consumer unit and it's coming all the way up to this switch and then it comes from this switch to the next door and there up to those lights, the other leg goes straight up. So this is down, it's no good. And this one here, sorry mate, is down as well, which is going up to these lights. So these lights have a fault on them as well as the other side. I was hoping at least one of them would be clear, but that wouldn't be of an interesting video, would it? <laughs> need some new, I need some van ideas. Because even though I've got all this racking, it still spills out onto the floor. It just, I can't keep it tidy. Jordan would go mad, although you can see the inside of Jordan's van is messier than any of our vans. You have a look here mate see here we've got a little teeth mark so it's been nibbled away doesn't appear to be anywhere else visible but that's our incoming cable oh, sun's bright It's been eaten here, along there, so the rodent damage is quite bad. I'm assuming squirrels, because of the rural location, but it could be mice or rats, but I don't know how they get up this high. I suppose they can climb. I'm no um, animal expert, but apparently their teeth don't conduct electricity, so they can actually eat right up to the, the in, inner core of the cable without getting a zap. It's only when they go across like live and earth, for example, that they get zapped. If I do manage to find this, we can try and temporarily repair it, but for a permanent repair, it needs to be protected against animals. So, I don't know if you saw, if, wait, is that mouse droppings on here? Have a look. It is, isn't it? Surely squirrel droppings will be bigger than that. The cables have to be protected so we can get metal co copex. So if you remember a job that Corey done at that large house and in the loft, it was all uh, metal conduit, flexible conduit. Um, that was to protect against rodents or anything like that getting in and damaging the cable. Or we could put it in mineral insulated cable, perhaps, because it won't be able to chew through that. There's something we'll have to do here, but we can't actually get into the loft. So it's gonna, we're talking about taking ceilings down to rewire this. So I'm looking for the one that's got one cable at it. So it'll be the end of line. Wee I'm just going to split now to try and figure out which way the fault is. So I've got my end of line, so we might be able to rule out that piece of cable and it'll be fine. And then we can move and work our way backwards and we'll find which leg is down. What one do you reckon is the middle? If you were wiring this, Max, what one would be the middle light? That one. One by the pillar? Or the one by the couch? Or the one I haven't taken down? So a lighting circuit's a radial. So it just goes from one point to the next to the next. So what I'm hoping to do is separate this and then we'll have two legs, one going back to the fuse board, one going on to the rest of the lights. What I'm hoping is one has a fault on it and the other one goes clear when, once I've separated it. If they both are down, that means there's more than one damaged piece of cable. Do you think I'm gonna have any luck? Um, is one of them gonna be clear or am I gonna have two dead ends? I mean, don't help, I can't tell which end is which, but let's have a look. 
That one's down. That one's clear. Woohoo! Something's gone right, mate. This is the bad one. It's a super technical X on it. <laughs> it's split there, but I don't know which one of those is which. So does it come back here or does it go on? So if I, this is our cable going up. So it looks like the fault is further on. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got this on bleep. So if it's got continuity, because I'm working on my Todd, except for our camera Max. I'm gonna to touch these ends together and prove essentially with an R1, R2 that this is the cable going down to there. So, we could do a tune, All right? Oh, it's not a very good tune, is it? I'm trying to do da, 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 da. It's not working, but, <laughs> so that's, Going back to our switch, so any light before that is good. I'm actually going to try and get them on so I've got a visual representation of what's where the fault would be. I make safe, I mean, cover the live, live one up. So I'm alone at the moment, there's no one else in here. I have complete control of the place, so I'm happy to do what I'm doing. So <clears throat> I'm going to have the switch hanging off. They're going to be, the cables are going to be terminated, but if this was had little kids running around, I'd terminate the switch fully and put it back. So there's no danger of anyone touching it. But as I'm alone, I'm feel safe to leave it hanging off. Neutral, that's our outgoing neutral. All I've done is there's our incoming cable, put the neutrals together, the lies are in the switch. So now I can just switch it on and off. So I want it in the off position while I, so I'm just testing the switch. You notice I turned that on with a screwdriver. It's not that I didn't trust myself, it's just that I've had too many MCBs blow up in my hand. So hopefully as I operate this switch, because there's no fault on it, we should have some lights on. <laughs> Watch it trip straight away. So we've got light, no light, light. Is that one on? It's coming through to here, isn't it? Yeah. I've just livened that up and we've got this one and this one on, but I can't tell if it's a lamp. So I know this is a good lamp. I'm just gonna stick it in the other ones just to make sure that it's not just duff lamps. Let's see if that one comes on. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna do the same here. So essentially what I've done is proved that it's good from the switch up to that light, that light, that light, this light, hopefully, and then that's the next one in the line. And in which case we know the fault is between that light and the end of line. So what we can do is split it in half again, and then we'll see which way the fault goes and then to narrow it down. That one's not come on, is it? Okay, we'll try that one in that one. If this one comes on, it could mean that, I mean, why would they wire it that way? It could go from that light to that light. I don't know how it's wired. So let's see if this comes on, or that one could have a duff transformer. No. So I'm gonna hazard a guess if the transformer's duff. Ah, so I think it goes that one to that one, there, 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 there. It looks like all of the ones over there are on and okay. So it's bet between where I've split the cables there and the end of line here. Now I believe, logically, it goes from here to here, 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 to there, to there. I can't 100% guarantee it, but that's how they were wired down in the other room. They sort of went in an S shape around. I'm gonna split it here. I'm gonna see if it's the cable going back that way or going this way. And I'll do exactly the same, see where the fault is, and I can do an R1, R2 prove which leg is which. Right, so we're gonna do the same again. So I've got two legs here. I'm hoping one of them goes from here to that light, that light back to there, and the other one goes from here to one of these. I think it's that way, yeah, that way. Let's have a little test on these. So that one appears to be clear to earth. Clear to earth. This one 
dead short. Now what's interesting is you see the reading, see how much lower it is, so we're much closer to the fault. So you think all oh, that's reading is along the live conductor to the fault and then back down the CPC, so we're very close to the fault. So the one with the X had the fault on it, so it goes this way. So I'm going to test it now. It may be that the fault is not there, in which case the fault would be further on from where that brake is. So I can put this back together and these lights would come on, if you're following me. So the fault is no longer there. So this piece of cable is good, which leads me to believe that the fault is from that light further on. I want to try and make electricians great again. Now that I've disconnected it and we know the fault's going that way, I've reconnected the cables here and that's brought on this light and this light with no fault. It would also bring on this cable here and there's no fault on it. So now we've narrowed it down from the cable going from here to here to here. So we're going to split it one more time at that light and it was going to be that leg and this leg here. Fault finding it is just a matter of breaking the circuit down and it's, log it's just logical to split. It's not always easy to tell what way round a circuit goes. This is so twisted I need a pair of pliers. Uh, to add insult to injury, I didn't have a pair of pliers in my tool bag, so it's like as it is. If we logically work our way through it, it's really easy to just digest it down. So I halved the circuit narrowed it down to half, halved it again, narrowed it down to half. So now I know the faults between that light there, this light and that light. So now that one of these legs will go to there, one of these legs will go to there. So it will be, I've narrowed it down now to one piece of cable. Let's find out which one it is. Oh, now remember we had 0 0.09, we're even closer to the fault. So it's this piece of cable here. So it's the cable going from here to there, that's down by the looks of it. Just double check it. <clears throat> so that cable goes over to here. So the, the leg that's down, is the one that goes from that to that one. So I'm just gonna see if I can break these clips out because it's clipped along a joist here. Then I imagine it's clipped along there. I don't think there's any chance of me, ooh. <laughs> any chance of me pulling the cable from there to there. Oh, a bit cobwebby but I'm going to see if I can get the clips off. Absolutely squashed by Celotex. Can't feel any damage along it. Oh well. I was hoping that if it was the, if it was the one going across the top, there would have been half a chance I'd be able to tie on and give it a good tug to get it up, break the clips and get it across the other one. But the fact it's a link between, I think the only thing I can do is leave this light and this light off so the lights will end there until we can get this ceiling down to repair this properly. This bit's suspected the way the cables go but so we're going to go through these like this and then that's essentially how the lights are wired. So what I've done, I tested the switch to start with and the whole thing is showing that it's down. So I've split it here and then tested this leg and it was completely clear and this leg was down. So I've got the power back on and restored lighting to these lights here. I've then took this light down and tested both ways. It was showing that there was a fault here and this piece of cable was good. So I've reinstated that and got these lights on. I've then taken this light apart and tested both ways. This piece of cable is good. However, this one is down. Unfortunately, due to the way these are wired, the cables actually go up to the middle of the pitch ceiling and across. If you look at the lights, it's, in, it's full of Celotex and it's all clipped. So I can't actually break it to pull in a new piece of cable there. So for now, I'm gonna have to have these lights completely disconnected. And so the circuit's only gonna go up to here. So we're just gonna have these lights on and then that's the fault repaired in here. However, I still have the fault next door, so we'll have a look at that now. Now, I did watch Jordan's video last night. It was just him and the camera then, so this is before he started taking off on YouTube and then the company. 
Now he rewired the piece of cable going between these two lights. That sh well, I hope that's still good anyway. And I think that was the last line. So it's like, I'm gonna assume that's our first light. It's quite a high reading. So I'm gonna guess it's down this end, but I could be wrong. I'm gonna take down these two to start with and see if I can, which way it goes. Oh, I'll get to inspect Jordan's work. See if it's up to the artisan standard. Okay, he's used a modern Wago box. Nice. That feels like the more modern cable. That feels very flexible. Oh, talk amongst yourselves. Oh, why is that so hard? Oh, jeez. Oh, look at them. Ancient push connectors he's used there. Don't be wrong with them. By the way, I'm not, I'm not slagging off uh, Jordan. I don't know which one's the newer cable. Yes, that's the, that's the new cable. This one. So that should be good. Fingers crossed. I'm not sure how they come apart, in all honesty. Let me know in the comments if you guys know what's going on here. If not, just brute force and ignorance will do the trick. So this one when the connector's on is the piece that Jordan rewired. So I know for a fact that goes from here to here and then onto the rest of the lights. And this should go back that way. So this will narrow down where our fault is. We've got a live, uh, oh man, my tester's about to die. Live earth fault and we're getting 0.21, so we're closer to the fault. So we've got our fearless leader, and if we pan up, you see we're in exactly the same room. And that's the light that I've got down. So this is one good thing about us documenting everything. Not only can people see our work and that we're honest tradesmen and we do uh, good work, we can also look back at jobs that we've been to to try and find out what the last electrician done. And Jordan was here, so I get to scrutinize his work and pick it apart. So this is what happened last time. So it's been completely chewed, but that leg has been replaced. Can people really tell the rodent by the bite? I'm not sure. See younger Jordan in a shirt that's a little bit too small for him. <laughs> Let's find out what lights he took down. It looks like he didn't want to take down that end one because the bed was there as well. Ah, oh, which one should I take down, Max? That one. Well, we did, this leg's good. And we're quite close, 0.22, so it's not going to be that one. It dips sky blue. I'm going to go for the left one because it looks a little bit easier. I had a 50-50 chance, mate. Absolutely biffed it. Yeah, that makes sense. So it goes from the switch to that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, so this cable here, I've got my bearings now. It's got the fault on it. So we've got 0.23. That one is clear. So that's the one that goes across to there that, that Jordan replaced. And then it goes across to there, back to the switch. So this one is down and that goes from here to here and then there to there. So we're doing exactly the same as next door. So it's just logically breaking it down into its segments to find the fault. So I'm gonna split it there and test which one of these has the fault on it. getting closer so this I'm getting 0 0.18 now if I go back to this one oh dear so it's the bit of cable by the looks of it that goes from <clears throat> this light to this light which is the one that we can't rewire that's a bit of a bummer isn't it it's going to be rodent damage yet again so the customer's going to have to get all the ceiling taken down and it be completely rewired so I think there's more than one fault here actually that leg going away, that's completely down and I can't use it. But this piece should now be clear to earth. So I'm doing an installation resistance test and I'm getting under two mega ohms. So anything under two should be investigated further. So we're gonna have to find out what leg is close to being down. The fault keeps growing. So let's try and find out what one goes back down. So that one, I'm getting one point Oh, it went up to two ohms. Uh, this one. This is, I'm getting, I'm getting about three ohms. So I think this is the one that goes down to there. So there's the one going out, which goes across to this light. Got a low reading. So I'm getting about, it does creep up to two mega ohms. So it's technically a pass, but. So at the minute it's getting better and better the longer I hold it, which would suggest to me that it might be a little bit damp up there. And there's a bit of moisture just across the top of the, the cable. 
So it's, it's creeping up and creeping up. Bear in mind this started at three. It's now up to six. It's the same with the one going out, which had the problem. It was only reading about one and a half mega ohms. It's now creeping up to a pass. Whereas that was definitely a further investigation. So it could be the fact that we've agitated it and moved the cables a little bit, or it could be that they are damaged and there's a bit of moisture across the top of the cables. So I've just reconnected that light and I wanna check to see that the reading hasn't gone down. And I've got the same reading again, but I have a suspicion that it's the transformer that's dragging that reading down. So I'm just gonna disconnect it. No. So it is why I wanted to check it because I'm guessing that the both of the cables together is lowering the resistance enough or maybe when I've pushed the cable back up it's lowered the resistance on that bit of cable. I have to take it apart again. Hmm, back up again. So what I'm gonna hazard a guess is happening is that the, when these go up they're in the same clip and uh, the insulation has been eaten away and it's tracking from the incoming cable across the outgoing cable. Let's see if my theory is correct. I'm just gonna connect the CPCs together. I'm getting all sorts of dodgy readings here. So it appears that this piece of cable that goes from the switch to this light, to that light, I'm getting about 3.6 mega ohms. But when the next cable is connected, that jumps back down to about one and a half mega ohms. But when I test that cable going away on its own, I'm getting about three or so mega ohms as well. So I don't know if it's the, accumulation of the resistance that's making it go down or whether the cables are clipped together or stacked on top of each other so that when I'm mega in it when they're connecting the live from that one is going down to the earth of the other cable or vice versa yeah without actually seeing the cable it's a bit difficult I'm just debating now whether I should reconnect that with that low reading it is a pass technically because above above a mega ohm but it's below two which requires further investigation I am investigating it and I can't seem to get to the bottom of it but this is the next light in the uh in the series, so it goes from there to here. I've just seen, it's disconnected there. I've just seen this one here is a brand new cable that um, we installed a couple of years ago. So that shouldn't be down, could be, but I'm getting a low reading. So what I've done is just disconnect the load to see if it goes up and it has gone up a little bit. Now I'm gonna disconnect this cable going across to there and see if it gets any better. It's just creeping up slowly but surely. So I'm just breaking this down. Now this is the cable that Jordan's put in. It's less than two years old. And when I'm zapping it, I was getting about six and then I moved the cable and it's jumped up to 15. It's jumped up to 22 now that I've moved it again. So I'm wondering if the cable is, is damaged again. Out of curiosity, because that moves so well, I'm gonna rewire it just to see if there's damage on the cable. Oh look, Jordan's new cable's already been eaten. So let's examine this bit of cable. Should I put a bit of light on it? So that's where Jordan's cable starts. We run down it. It's been munched straight through. Nibble, nibble. This bit seems to be the worst. Look, that is completely down. And that's probably where it's tracking across. Now, what do you guys think? Do, would you want to reconnect the rest of these knowing that this is only two year old cable? I'm gonna hazard a guess the rest of the lights are like this. This has only just been rewired. Well, I say just, two years ago, that's no age for a cable. Whew. That's bad. You can see it's completely eaten. I mean, look at that bit, it's terrible. Now this was testing out better than any of the other pieces of cable and look at the state of this. So in my professional opinion, I'm not going to reconnect all of those lights. Because if this was getting 20 mega ohms in this condition, God only knows what it's like where I'm getting one mega ohm or two mega ohms. So this is our damaged piece of cable. Um, now that it's isolated, I'm gonna carry out some insulation resistance testing. Hopefully we're getting the same sort of readings and as I move the cable, it will simulate and get worse and it, I can show you on the tester. We're going live to earth 
and it's going completely clear. Now you look at the state of this cable, would you say that was safe for continued use? Now I'll go neutral earth and we've gone completely clear again and I'm going to go live to neutral. Now would you say that that is a safe piece of cable? It's, I've just pulled it out and it was testing poorly. Now what I imagine is this piece here is now bent and all the cores are apart. When this was installed this would have been flat on down like this where the screws would have been eating it. If I try and do the test again. So it's a little bit worse life than neutral. So on Omega you can lock it on so it's constantly testing. But it's something to be aware of because when you take them off they're still going to keep pumping a voltage down it. I'm going to move this. If I do it near the test you might be able to see the reading get worse. So there's the slightest movement and it's going from a dead short. So I was getting about 20 mega ohms when it was in the ceiling. Now these would have been straight but it was actually covered in Celotex. You see it around here. So I'm wondering they would have been quite close if it was tracking across the Celotex. It was, I'm really flabbergasted that it didn't actually cause a dead short up there because this cable was testing out fine. On an EICR that would have been a passable reading. So we carry out insulation resistance to test the, if the cable is healthy and this just shows that it's not always foolproof. We can't see the cable and if it's laying flat it could be completely bare and still test out okay. Right, so in here we've got, um, we've only managed to get these two lights, that lamp's just gone, unfortunately, just before I was about to film. Uh, so we've just got a bit of light in here. If I take you out here, we've managed to get most of the lights on. So it's only the far two ones that aren't on. That one there needs a lamp in it, the one on the right hand side. We gave them as much light as we can and we're going to suggest them that they have it rewired once they have it refurbished. But that's it for today, um, we'll catch you in the next one. I hate flies so much.